So yesterday at a Trump rally, a 20-year-old attempted to assassinate Donald Trump. And he almost succeeded. He clipped Donald Trump's ear with an AR bullet and successfully murdered one person. And I asked myself, what would that have solved, say, if he did die? And what did we say to the world as us being the strongest, most integral democracy? What message did we give to the world or our leaders are threatened by political violence that whether or not they incite, they are now susceptible to. So it's not as simple as calling your opponents losers, suckers, weak. It now impacts their ability to live their life safely. Before I go into the details of the assassination attempt, I want to take a step back and talk about the recent debate, Biden slipping in the polls and in popularity, and how that has led to this moment. At this most recent NATO press conference, President Biden called Vladimir Zelensky of Ukraine President Putin. And then he called Kamala Harris President Trump. And so it's really disappointing that, according to the polls in America, the majority of Americans still find Biden to be more reliable, honest, trustworthy in terms of the truth. But when it comes to action and when it comes to how they present themselves, the majority of Americans also believe that Trump presents himself better in spite of the fact that he can be seen as a liar and seen as dishonest because he is. But the reality is, in spite of all his lies and in spite of all his hate and vitriol, now he and his coalition of not only conservatives and Republicans and simply people who aren't on the left, they now have justification for all the fear and paranoia and regardless of what they blame this assassination attempt on, they're going to say that they're right. And they're going to use the objective moment of the assassination attempt as the basis of their reality, say, if they believe the woke left is taking over the, uh, the country and LGBT people, uh, they have too much rights and they're trying to effeminate us and, and colored people and affirmative action and all these things, critical race theory. We have to take this country back. It's, it's, it's fuel to the fire. And I don't see an honest way out of this with more political violence. And so our country doesn't have a place for this kind of violence and we can't justify it in any way because if we do we have to then understand that that same violence can be flipped on us whether we're on the left or the right we have to realize that disrespecting our political opponents calling them names and saying they should be killed or saying they're a bigger threat than they are or saying that they're a big threat therefore we must kill them is going to get someone hurt because in a democracy if we voted Trump in, if we funded him in, if we put him in office so far that we are now saying, oh, he's a threat, we have to get him out, we have to use our political processes to get him out. We can't use corruption. We can't use the circumventing of democracy with assassinations and using different branches of the law to make Trump ineligible because ultimately, he is now completely eligible to simply walk in on the first day of presidency and take the spot. That shot of him standing there with his fist up saying fight with blood on his face is now symbolic. It is symbolic of where we are in America. And his reaction is symbolic of where his people are. They're not more scared than they are angry. Conservatives in this country, I believe, that as someone who sits in the middle, we should not demonize all of them and realize that someone demonized Trump so much that a young 20-year-old wasted his life to try to take Trump's. And ultimately, if you kill Trump, you've only cut the head off the Hydra and you've created three more. And killing a man doesn't take away from his ideas. And I, as the same way I wouldn't want Biden to be assassinated, I wouldn't want Trump to be assassinated. I want to live in a country where our political leaders talk their mess, take their L's, and then they go home. And as much hateful things as they say, I think we should be held accountable by our actions and our words, but not with assassinations. I think that all the political violence that Donald Trump 
commits, for example, with January 6th, I believe that he should be held accountable under the law. That said, we'll see where things go from here because the world is a scary place. There's so much to talk about, so much to discuss. I just wanted to stop by and talk about this because, you know, this is news and this is life and we should all be paying attention right now.